Hello traders, Nick Shaheen here looking at Snowflake. For the first time, I promise I know nothing about the company. So what the heck am I doing a video on it? Um, I knew nothing about Palantir. Did a pretty darn good video on it not too long ago. So I got a quick education. So if you look at here, it says package software. <laughs> Everything is packaged software. So the way I understand it, this is a slice and dice company of data where it's agnostic as to where the data come from. comes from. So good thing, because everything now has become data. Uh, the byproduct, the good thing that came out of 2020, if you can believe it, uh, the not the pandemic, the pandemic was bad. Uh, the quarantine was good. So that's really what destroyed businesses and caused businesses to panic and rush into what? The cloud, online, everything online. Every business needed to have an online uh, sales revenue presence so that you know Shopify, Amazon for the shopping, um, all these uh, tech so uh, companies. Um, heck, um, Overstock was almost out of business. <laughs> uh, Wayfair, it's just new life, right? So this is the company here. Snowflake is the kind of company that takes advantage of that. Um, so clearly, too much love at the IPO and then confirmed here. And if somebody didn't b book profits up here, you know, they, they love it too much and they shouldn't be watching this video because nothing is going to tell them to book it. They, they're in it until it's it hits $6,000 million. Uh, dollars. So I saw this one guy on uh, on TV who came out in defense of it, which is fine because he had a valid reason to. He had his logic, but immediately jumped into exaggeration. Uh, by Instead of just saying, buy the dip, he went as far as saying, it's going to be the fastest growing company to $5 billion ever. Like, okay, how about we take baby steps? You know, CRM, I think, has that. Um, but, you know, it, they didn't do that overnight. So this is a very young company. Let's take baby steps. First order of business is let's buy the dip <laughs> before we call it to be the best ever of all time, before we're calling it the goat. Let's go with the buy the dip. And I would uh, buy the dip just from an initial instinct. So I looked at it when the first when first the headline came out, and I think this blue line is the aftermarket hour uh, where it's trading. It went down to... Um, a point in time that was perfect. So I'm going to drill down a little bit. This is just the daily is too big of a candle. It came down to this. Uh, so it knows what it's doing. The low overnight, I mean, after hours was at this candle down here. So this arguably served as the neckline for this last extension. Um, if you want to say this was wrong and this was the base for this rally, uh, they priced it all out. That's a good thing. Um, if you're a bull of Snowflake and you're selling it tomorrow morning, then I question your original uh, reason not to book it up here because it'd be wrong to get out of it down here. So whoever sold it after hours here doesn't know what they're doing with regards to charts. I don't know the company, and I can tell you that this would be a place where I'd actually buy it. Um, this was the base for the rally. Therefore, it's okay to revisit it to touch it. So it's like they they stomp on it. Okay, it's solid footing. Let's go. So what's the uh, what, here? Here are a few things I'm looking at. Oh, there you go. So that was the after hour look. You can see that the blue line. That was the after hour quote from Trading View, and versus the actual candle, like to the penny. So. This is normal price action, perfectly normal. So I'm going to use this. I can tell you that this level here sticks out to me. We'll get the value later. So I'm going to eyeball it to say 271. Um, if I were to sell naked puts, it'll be at 270 to own shares. That's the only reason I would sell naked puts. 260 would be really safe uh, from that perspective. Safe meaning um, a good starting point to own the shares long term. How's that? Okay, so um, sorry about that. The chat room is open. You can join. We do this all day, by the way. It's tons of fun. Hundreds of people in there. No jerks allowed. And there's a link down below to get you there. You get 10, day, 10 days free to check it out. Uh, there is a, a um, PayPal transaction, but it's zero dollars. I just want to weed out the trolls. Um, okay, so w where it ended the day is 
also makes sense. This was the prior fail from before. So this level matters, this level matters, the battle. So ideally, if you're a bull, it's okay to give back the, the breakout spot. You test it for footing. If it holds, you bounce, you struggle with this line, you bounce again, you go above this line, you test it for footing, and then you continue on another struggle line right here. Ideally, as time ticks and this whole thing shifts over to the right, uh, you want them to come back and tackle this. So let's say this way, this way, and eventually down to here. Then this becomes the, the problem and the opportunity. So one level at a time. Okay, so the first level, uh, they've already tested and held the footing. By the way, this yellow line right here is the actual point of control. So this is the stomach of how where people love to trade it. Both bulls and bears love it down here. So it's support on the way down. It's resistance on the way up. But we're above it, falling into it. It should be support. Whoever traded it here, there are a lot of them. They go back and say, wait a minute, last time I traded here, I made money. Let's go, let's go. So it's not a place to get out. And the the levels that I'm looking at... 271 and change matters, in my opinion. Uh, 275 and a half matters. And, uh, of course, the zone anywhere above 290 is going to matter as well. So after hours, I see it at 279 right now. And uh, that would be right here. This makes sense. This was a prior failing point and um, somewhat of a base right here, one could argue. So somewhere in the middle lies the truth. Wrong wrong somewhere in the middle light of truth so if you're a fibonacci person let's see if we can get you going with some fibonacci stuff oh there it is i was like where is my fibonacci fib okay so if we consider the whole rally the 50 percent is 285 so just below that if you didn't want to do that and you say it's uh, just you just want to consider the the last extension, which probably would be from here to here, it's a little bit higher. The 61.8 comes back to 290. So anyway, I'm not a big Fibonacci guy. I can eyeball it and say it's okay to give back half the rally and still be fine. And in this case, I have a neckline against which I can ping. The overnight action was perfect. So if I own the shares, I'm not getting out on the dip. It was too late. <laughs> Getting out was up here, booking some profits, locking some profits. How can you lock profits? Um, if you know options and you own shares, you can sell covered calls, uh, which means you sell the call against the shares you own so you don't create extra risk. Um, and this way you can participate until you hit that level and then you might be asked to leave your shares at that level and keep the money you collected for the premium. It's like you promise somebody, uh, it's like you own the shares and you want to promise me to sell me your shares at a, uh, you know, at $10 higher. I'm just throwing out numbers. So that would be one way. If you own calls and you want to protect your shares, your, your asset, ergo the calls, you will, uh, you can sell covered calls against the calls you own as long as they are higher so you don't create extra risk. You can sell them anywhere you want, but if you sell them lower, then you create temporary risk. If you sell it in the same time frame, uh, that's doable, but usually people sell them shorter term, um, kind of like a uh, call calendar or a call diagonal. But that's a story for a different time. It's basically teaching somebody a lesson. So if I own a 300 call for, say, next year sometime, February, March, whenever, and I wanted to um, participate or uh, take advantage of the increased implied volatility in the options now, I could have sold the 300 call that is shorter distance, like in December, if there's any value to it at the time. And that would have brought money into my account, and that money tomorrow would be pure profits because stock is falling. If it opens lower tomorrow, that premium I collected goes poof, goes almost to zero. So whoever bought that premium from me loses money overnight. I make money to offset some of my longs. That's how you can lock profits. Um, the one strategy is called selling a covered call against the stock. The other one is similar, selling a covered call against the call. Uh, that ha comes in many flavors. I just mentioned one that is a calendar. I own the 300, I sell the 300 shorter in time. 
if I sell the 310 shorter in time, then it becomes a diagonal because I didn't just change the time, I also changed the level. I went up. I could go down, but that would mean I'm short uh, lower than where I'm, I'm long, thereby creating some sort of a risk, uh, interim risk. Doable, I've done it before, uh, but you have to know what you're doing. So this is, these are just two ways of actually locking in some profit. So what's the easiest way to lock in some profit? Booking it. <laughs> what's wrong with booking it and buying it higher if, if you need to? Or booking half or booking some. If I own 10, uh, if I own 100 uh, shares, why not you know sell 10? Anyway, hindsight, right? Right now, there's no need to panic after the drop. The drop took out your panic. If you're buying puts after the drop to protect your asset, you're probably making a mistake. I don't know the shares. They're probably super expensive. Let's see if um, if, if they're not too new for this platform. Whoo! Holy mackerel! <laughs> and I thought Zoom was expensive. 162 price to sales. Whoo! Okay, we're going to chalk that up. I'm going to ignore I saw that. Okay, so the price of the stock has 162 years built into it of sales. I'm going to I'm going to ignore that. And and uh, I don't want to piss off people. Anyway, that's snowflakes.